Hello. Okay, we're going to wait just five minutes. We're going to begin with the class with a little review. <laughs> Sí. Hello, good evening. Okay, right now we are going to begin because I guess that some people are are kind of sick or they are kind of busy with their jobs. So we are going to begin with a little bit of, we're going to, to begin with a review of previous things that we studied before. So last class we were studying about infinitive and gerunds like to express uses and purposes, meaning of use and purpose doesn't change and structure changes. So we were talking about infinitive, right? What was uh, what was an infinitive? And we can use it to um, provide commands, right? Or sorry, purpose. And also gerunds, right? So we use it to also uh, explain the purpose of the functioning of something. And we have the formula here for the verb to be, or sorry, the infinitive, the particle to plus the verb. For example, I use my cell phone to call my friends and to call my friends, the call is the infinitive, right? That would be that infinitive phrase. And to form a gerund, we use uh, the preposition for plus a verb plus ing. I use my cell phone for calling my friends. So for calling my friends is the gerund phrase. And this will be the, that would be the same purpose, right? That That's what we were studying before. So we use uh, infinity with two and four with gerunds, right? It is the same meaning. It is, uh, for example, I use my computer to send in emails. It is incorrect. And I use my computers for send emails. It is incorrect also. It's for sending emails, right? Or to send emails. That's what we were studying before uh, last week, right? And we did this exercise also. And we were talking about imperatives, right? Imperatives that we can create with infinitives, right, also. Imperatives are usually used for instructions or commands and demands. So, imperativos son para órdenes, ¿verdad? And uh, we use the infinitive to, to create uh, this kind of uh, imperatives. For example, to make, to map. So, let's uh, mix imperatives and infinitives to come up with great suggestions. So... Instead of a command, en lugar de una orden, nosotros ocupamos ciertas expresiones, common expressions, right? For example, be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, and try. And after these expressions, we used to uh, have like the infinitive, the one in yellow. Be sure to practice with your friends. Make sure to use a dictionary. 
don't forget to think in English. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce properly. So that will be the that will be the, the expressions, right? To provide suggestions instead of commands. And para sonar más suave, para sonar mejor, eso es lo que estábamos hablando, ¿verdad? Y we can uh, create negative statements, negative suggestions, right? So, let's see here. This is just a, a review. And this will be like the structure, right? Like a uh, subject plus use, invention, infinitive, complement. Like this will be infinitive and gerunds, and also for purposes, right? For listening and to listen, this will be the, the formula to create infinitives and gerunds. And also the formula to, for commands, right? For imperatives giving suggestions right imperative be sure make sure remember don't forget plus infinitive plus complement i don't know if you have any question any doubt about this topic because last uh, last time we review all of this really quickly right so no sé si tienen alguno de ustedes alguna pregunta de estos dos temas que fueron los últimos que vimos um, ya que lo vimos bien rápido la vez pasada lo vimos Todo esto vimos en una clase, creo yo. Entonces, no sé si alguno tiene alguna pregunta. Questions. No questions. Okay, I can see Kimberly, Christian, and Irma. Okay, thank you for being here. Uh, the rest, I think it is sick or is kind of busy, right? Kind of busy with their jobs. Parece que están ocupados hoy. Pero vamos a empezar con esto. Entonces, para los que no estuvieron en la clase del viernes, eh, porque vamos a tener este, el pasado viernes tuvimos clase y este viernes también vamos a tener. No sé si tienen alguna pregunta de esto. O si pudieron completar la section one y section two sin problemas. Everything correct? Without problems? A mí me está dando problemas. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. A mí me está dando problema el video de la sesión 3, el, el audio, perdón, donde eh, se habla del carnaval. Y yo pongo, pongo las palabras, pero no me sale. El carnaval. Ajá, donde habla de ahí, ya también habla de, de, de del, del carnaval de Río. Y ahí está hablando de la conversación ah. de cuándo es, de cuánto dura, es, me está dando problema. Ah. Ok, lo voy a apuntar porque parece que a mí también no me está funcionando. Pero es el audio, ¿verdad? Ajá, el audio. Ok, no problem. Lo voy a buscar, este es de intermedio 2. Ok, lo voy a buscar y si mañana lo puedo ver, lo voy a reportar. Porque ahorita como pueden ver, no me carga, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, vamos a continuar con la clase. Solo quería asegurarme de lo que los, los que no estuvieron el viernes pasado, pues no tuvieran ninguna duda con esto. Y si no hay dudas, pues vamos a continuar, ¿ok? Ok, and remember that this week is section three and midterm. If you are able to continue with the rest of the section, si pueden continuar y avanzar más, pues háganlo. Así van a ahorrarse tiempo, ¿verdad? Si lo pueden hacer, si tienen el tiempo. So, this will be the section uh, three, right? And also, I think that we are going to check a little bit of section four. Objective. In this class, it says you will learn vocabulary for discussing celebration. O sea, que vamos a hablar de celebraciones, right? What kind of celebrations do we have in El Salvador? Do you know? Like holidays or celebrations. What kind of celebrations do we have? Independence Day. day. Independence Days. What else? Work Day. Which day? Uh, work Day. 
Work, la Labor Day. Labor Day, Día ah, del Trabajo. Labor Day. Labor yes. Day. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. What else? Christmas. Christmas. Mother Day. Mother's Day. And tomorrow, what day is tomorrow? San Valentine's Day. San Valentine's Day, exactly. Are you going to celebrate tomorrow? With your friends or your significant other? With my co-workers. With your co-workers? Yes. Okay, what are you going to do? We're going to change gifts. Okay, exchange gift like Amigo Secreto? Yes. Okay, that's exciting. Very good. Perfect. And who else is going to to celebrate tomorrow, San Valentine's Day? ¿Quién más va a celebrar mañana? Irma, are you going to celebrate San Valentine's Day? Yes, it's the birthday of my daughter. Oh, it's the birthday of your daughter. How old is your daughter? Excuse me? How old is your daughter? ¿Cuántos años? Ten years. Ten years. Okay, very good, perfect. So, ella nació el día de San Valentín. Yes. Okay, very good, very interesting. And Christian, are you going to celebrate something to, tomorrow? Or no celebration for you? No You're... celebration. No you? celebration, <laughs> right? No <laughs> celebration, okay, very good. But yeah, you can uh, celebrate if you want to, right? Uh, with your friends or family anyway but it's 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 good it's good it's it's fun to celebrate some some holidays so that's what we are going to study today holidays and festivals and it says here uh saint patrick's day do you know saint patrick's day dia de san patricio do you know where that is celebrated that is march 17th Día de San Patricio in Ireland, right? In Ireland, St. Patrick's Day. Also in in United States and some places here in El Salvador celebrated, but I I don't know which ones. It says people of Irish background wear green to celebrate their culture with parades, dancing, parties, and special food. So it's about a culture, a cultural thing. What is the meaning of parades? ¿Qué significa parades? Paradas, no, right. Paradas de buses, no. Parade is desfile, right? Desfiles, parade. We have also Day of the Dead, Día de los Muertos, right? November 2nd. Mexicans make playful skeleton sculptures and bake pan de muerto, bread of the dead. So, um, have, do you celebrate Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos? Here is Dia de los Difuntos, right? Mm -hmm. That is the difference. Yes, Christian. Uh, no, teacher. Um, no. And do you do you celebrate Dia de los Difuntos here in Salvador? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Do you go to the cemetery with flowers and things? Antes. Ah, before. No, Antes. No. Before, before. Before, okay. Okay, very good. And have you eaten pan de muerto? ¿Ya han comido pan de muerto? No. No. Some bakeries, they sell pan de muerto here. I didn't know that. And now it's really popular, right? Pan de muerto, roscas, a lot of things. Next one is Chinese New Year, which is in January or February. I guess this year was in January or February. I don't know. Chinese people celebrate the Lunar New Year with fireworks and dragon dances. Also, social media, right? They they add some like icons or gifts from Chinese New Year, right? So that you can use that. Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving. Dia de, Dia de Gracias. Do we celebrate Thanksgiving here in El Salvador? ¿Nosotros lo celebramos aquí o no lo celebramos? No. No, right. We don't celebrate. Uh, 
this last year was kind of weird because I was I was checking social media and I saw that many people were selling turkeys, pavos, estaban vendiendo pavos, estaban they were doing a lot of things for Thanksgiving and I I thought but we don't celebrate that but they were selling things probably for people from another country from people from the United States right because this is a United States celebration. It says here in the United States families get together have a traditional meal and give thanks for life and health. So what other holiday do you know? What other holiday? ¿Qué otro día festivo conocen? Holiday es un día festivo, ¿verdad? Holiday. Father's Day. Father's Day. Which one do you celebrate more? Mother's Day or, or Father's Day? Mother's Day. Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day. Mothers are more popular than fathers, right? I don't know why. But yes, it's, it's more popular Mother's Day. Right? Father's Day is less, a little bit less. And what else? What else do you know? Uh, what else? Halloween. We have Halloween, but some people celebrate with parties here Halloween. That is from the uh, United States, I believe, right? It's more popular there. Uh, what else? Semana Santa. How do you say Semana Santa here? Holy Week. <laughs> Holy Week. Uh -huh. Holy Week or Easter, right? Semana Santa. That is coming, coming soon. So very good. So, so we are going to talk about holidays. Teacher, uh, yes. teacher day. <laughs> the teacher day. The teacher's day. Very good. <laughs> sometimes we celebrate it. Sometimes we don't celebrate it, right? Very good. Now we are going to find the incorrect word. I'm going to I'm going to show you some vocabulary. And you will have to tell me if which one is the incorrect word. Okay, eat. What things can we eat? Or what things we cannot eat? That would be the opposite, right? Candy, sweets, a mask. A mask. A mask. A mask. Let's see. A mask. Exactly, right? So this is vocabulary that we are going to use for holidays, <laughs> for celebrations. <laughs> Next one. <coughs> give. What can we give? Presents, a celebration, money. Mm -hmm. A celebration. a celebration exactly celebration we cannot give a celebration very good next one we can go to decorations go to a wedding go to a party decoration decorations decorations let's see exactly decorations is the incorrect one we can have a picnic a beach a meal which one is incorrect? A beach. beach. A beach. Let's see. Beach. Exactly. That's correct. Play. We. What can we play? Games, candles, music. Candles. Candles. Candles is incorrect one. Exactly. Pen. Send cards. Flowers. Barbecue. 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 Let's see. Exactly, very good. Visit relatives, food, close friends. Food. Let's see. Food, exactly. We cannot visit, but we can eat food, right? Watch a birthday, a parade, fireworks. A birthday. Birthday, let's see. Birthday, birthday exactly. Wear costumes. Invitations, traditional clothes. Invitations. Invitations, exactly. Very good, perfect. So, we are going to check some celebrations here. Let me see here. Yes. I'm going to play a video and we are going to answer the questions right let me see the, the the questions it says what celebration is the video talking about what do they normally eat in the celebration explain what traditions are mentioned in the video 
do people from another country celebrate this holiday? And here, question mark. And check more holidays in the following video. Okay, so we're going to watch two videos right now just to introduce the topic, okay? Let's watch this one first. Hello. Can you hear it? And welcome to this week's episode of Dinner Table, the show about yes, food. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I will play it again. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Dinner Table, the show about food. My name is Anthony Russo, and today we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. As you know, North America is a huge melting pot. Do you think everyone celebrates Thanksgiving in the same way? Do you think they eat the same foods? Let's ask some people and find out. How would you explain Thanksgiving to someone outside of North America? Well, you know, Thanksgiving's a unique holiday. It's kind of a time to sit back relax and a little reflection on how you should be thankful for what you have. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Joe. What do you folks serve for Thanksgiving Day? Traditional Thanksgiving Day meal? Oh yeah, we have the big turkey. We usually have two of them because there's so many of us. <laughs> Cranberry sauce, uh, mashed potatoes, gravy. Yeah, it's great. A lot of food, a lot, a of, lot food. of food. A lot of food, a lot of food. Now Joe, you have a lot of food, a lot of dessert, there must be a lot of dishes in cleanup. Do you pitch in? Cleaning is definitely a part of it. You wash dishes, you clean the table, you bring it back into the kitchen. So there's gotta be a lot of leftovers. <laughs> nothing, nothing beats leftovers after Thanksgiving. Yeah, that Mashed lasts you through the turkey. weekend. Oh, yeah. for the whole week. There's so much food. <laughs> Do you have a favorite part of Thanksgiving? My favorite part of Thanksgiving is coming home and seeing everybody and seeing my grandmother, who I love very dearly. That's always nice. Any family traditions that have carried on throughout the years? The main family tradition is probably football. <laughs> because the Detroit Lions always play on Thanksgiving, so my uncle always has to watch the Detroit Lions play. And what food is served on Thanksgiving? Well, we'll have a turkey. We'll also have stuffing and macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes, but I don't really like sweet potatoes. <laughs> you got a lot of food there. Must be some leftovers. There are not a whole lot of leftovers by the time Thanksgiving is done. And Grandma gets all of them, if there are any. <laughs> Grandma gets all of them. Grandma gets whatever she wants. <laughs> That's great. Any uh, specific dishes that are family tradition? Well, we definitely have the traditional Thanksgiving food, um, turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes. But I'm Korean, so we also usually have some sort of rice with kimchi. Kimchi is a definite must because we're Korean. Um, as well as various other um, Korean food, we usually have our relatives like potluck and bring something with them. So whatever they decide to bring. What do you do after the meal? Um, we are usually pretty comatose because of all the food that we've eaten. So we sit around and we usually talk. Sometimes the uh, grown-ups will play um, old Korean card games. Um, and the kids usually just sit around and talk, or we go out to a movie. That's usually what we do. Well, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. How do you spend Thanksgiving, Juan Carlos? I spend Thanksgiving with friends. Sounds nice. With all those friends, there must be some great food. What food is on the menu for Thanksgiving? My friends always cook the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. However, I bring also a dish from my home country, Venezuela. And what dish is that? Maracuchitos, which is plantain with cheese, fried, and uh, very, very delicious. It's always a hit. Mm, sounds good, sounds good. And how about for dessert? I usually also make a uh, sweet from pineapple and papaya. We serve that with ice cream. It is another hit. Wow, sounds like a fantastic meal. It is a big celebration. All this talk of food is making me hungry.
I'm Anthony Russo from Dinner Table, wishing you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Okay, perfect. Now we are going to answer the questions, okay? It says, what celebration is the video talking about? What celebration is the video talking about? Thanksgiving. 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 Perfect. Thanksgiving. What do they normally eat in this celebration? Turkey. Turkey. Exactly. Mashed potatoes, right? Mash and cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce. What traditions are mentioned in the video? What do they do traditionally? The different type of food the the different people eat in the video. Exactly. Different people they eat different type of food, right? And also they visit family, right? They visit their relatives, etc. They get together, right? Let's see. Do people from another country celebrate this holiday? Yes. Yes, right. What what nationalities were we were able to to watch there in the video? A Korean woman. A Korean woman, and what else? And another person I, from which country? Venezuela. Exactly, Venezuela. Exactly, Venezuela. So we had a person, a, a woman from Korea, and another person from Venezuela. And, and they also bring their own food, right? Chim, kimchi and also maracuchitos, right, from Venezuela. And what do you know about Thanksgiving? Why do they celebrate that? ¿Qué saben del Thanksgiving ustedes? ¿Por qué lo celebran? ¿Por qué creen que ellos celebran el Thanksgiving? For relaxing reflections. For sorry, for what? For relax and reflections. For relax. Yes, yeah, for relax. And also for, it's like a tradition, right? To say thank you, right? Actually, I was watching a video. I don't know if this is. This is okay. Let me see here. No, it's, it is not this one. But I was watching a video about Thanksgiving and the origins of Thanksgiving. And um, let me see if I can play for you. Or I don't know if I have it here. Oh, I think I have it at the end of this one. Let me see here. But it's related to Thanksgiving. Let me see here. I lost it. At very close of time, no. Speaking, no. But it was talking about Thanksgiving. I I don't know. I guess that I deleted it. But I they were explaining that Thanksgiving was a celebration because they joined with the indigenous, the Native Americans, and the Native Americans taught the pilgrims how to. Um, grow grains and how to uh, raise cattle right and how to like to, how to plant things to create food because they didn't know how to do it and the American indigenous they they knew so one day they got together and they say thanks right they 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 say thank you to the Native Americans for teaching them everything that they have done like how to grow plants, how to grow food, right, for, for them. And, and they wanted to say thank you. That's what I, the, the, that's the origin, I guess, that it's um, the, the Thanksgiving. But I was watching another video, and uh, this video was, like, totally the opposite. Like, it was not talking about um, the Thanksgiving like in a very lovely way. They say that they celebrate because they kill a lot of American, Native Americans, and they celebrate it for that because they kill a lot of uh, indigenous people. And also 
uh, Abraham Lincoln, who was the person who made it official at the Thanksgiving, that was one of the presidents from the United States, Abraham Lincoln uh, said that uh, the day that they the, he did official that day, he hanged like a lot of uh, Native Americans uh, in front of a lot of people to celebrate and to say thank you that they have conquered the Native Americans. So uh, I guess that they were celebrating the killing of Native Americans, right? The the uh, massive or, or the assassination, the massive assassination of the um, indigenous in this area. But with the time, the story changed, right? Con el tiempo, la historia cambió y dijeron que era porque habían dado gracias, porque les habían enseñado a los indígenas, pero en realidad no era así. Dicen que es porque ellos asesinaron a bastantes indígenas americanos y pues por eso celebran ellos. Eh, así se inició el día del Thanksgiving. Por eso muchos Ameri uh, Indi American, Native Americans o nativos de los Estados Unidos no les gusta celebrar o lo celebran de una manera diferente, ¿verdad? But that would be like, I think that behind every holiday there is a story that is kind of different from nowadays, for example, Christmas or I don't know, Independence Day or Día de la Cruz. For example, Día de la Cruz here is different because that is uh, that was part of our native people, right? Or native indigenous. And then uh, Spanish people came here and they said, no, you don't have to celebrate that. Like, um uh los cultivos and all of that right you have to celebrate god right so they they replace it with the de la cruz instead of the previous gods that we used to have so it's kind of it's kind of similar it's a combination nowadays i guess is every holiday is a combination of of the two cultures right the the conquerors and the people who were conquered but that that's an interesting point of view but I will look for it. I will look for the video and I will play it, I guess. Because it's really interesting. Is that's this uh that's really interesting because you use the language also to know different things, not only to communicate, but also to know uh the origin and the culture of um of for example the United States, right? Or other people. Now we're going to check other national holidays. Uh, just for you to know how uh, or the name of these holidays. And these are holidays from the United States, okay? I'm going to play right now. New Year's Day marks the end of the previous year and the beginning of a new one. It has become an occasion for celebration the night of December 31st, known as New Year's Eve. Each year on the third Monday of January, we celebrate the birth and life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's a time when we remember the things that Dr. King fought for to gain freedom and equality of all races and people. U.S. President's Day is officially known as our first president, George Washington's birthday. President's Day is a good chance to learn more about American history and past presidents. Memorial Day, also known as Decoration Day, is a day set aside in memory of dead members of the armed forces of all wars. Independence Day, commonly known as the 4th of July, commemorates the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776. Labor Day is recognized in the U.S. as a celebration of the working class. It grew out of a celebration and parade in honor of the working class by the Knights of Labor in 1882 in New York. Columbus Day is observed in honor of Christopher Columbus discovering the New World and his landing in the West Indies on October 12, 1942.
Veterans Day is a holiday in the U.S. in commemoration of the end of World Wars I and II and in honor of veterans of the armed forces. Thanksgiving is celebrated as a day of feasting and giving thanks for favors or goodness. The first Thanksgiving was celebrated to give thanks to God and the Native Americans for helping the pilgrims who arrived on the Mayflower survive the brutal winter. Christmas Day is a holiday that commemorates the birth of Jesus. It is celebrated in many different ways depending on one's religion, culture, and beliefs. Some common customs are gift giving, church celebrations, and various decorations. Okay, so those are some of the those are some of the holidays in the United States that we are going to study. So let's see here. Uh, this is some some vocabulary that we are going to use in this um in this new in this unit, right? For example, we have December thirty first, the light of the the last day of the year. How do we call that? ¿Cómo le llamamos a eso? 31 December, the December 31st. New Year. Let's see. Sorry. Yes, exactly. New Year's Eve, right? Vispera de Año Nuevo, New Year's Eve, exactly. Next one. Uh, we have also the religious period in which Muslims do not eat or drink during the day. That is another hol holiday for Muslims. It is the Ramadan. So in different cultures, we have different um days right a holiday in the autumn in the u.s and canada when families have a big meal together that is the thanksgiving thanksgiving exactly thanksgiving um for february 14th right a day when you give a valentine card to someone you have or would like to have a romantic re relationship with what is valentine. that day Valentine's Day, exactly. Tomorrow, right? Happy Valentine's Day for everyone. A person in your family who lived a long time ago. How do you how do you call a person in your family who lived long time ago? An ancestor, right? Ancestor. Let's see. The season of the year between summer and winter when leaves fall from the trees. That is autumn, right? Let's see if I have another another holiday here. A day each year when people give a car or present to their mother or do something special for her. What is that day? Mother's Day. Mother's, Mother's day. day, exactly. It's a harvest festival celebrated by ethnic Chinese and Vietnamese people. A harvest festival, un festival de la cosecha. The harvest is cosecha. That is mid-autumn festival. That is that is the name of that festival. A public holiday or day of festivities held in honor of working people in the U.S. and Canada on the first Monday in September in many other countries is May 1st. What is that day? Labor Day. Labor. What is Labor Day? Día del Trabajo, ¿verdad? Labor Day. Let's see the next one. A celebrated on November 2nd in various European and Latin American countries, especially the Mexican observance of this day. ¿Qué celebramos el 2 de noviembre nosotros? What do we celebrate? It's the day of the dead, Dia de los Difuntos, ¿verdad? When you go to when we go to cemeteries, etc. It's a Japanese national holiday which takes place annually on May 5th, the fifth day of the fifth month, and is part of Golden Week. This is the Chinese New Year, right? It says it is recognized on various days in many places around the world. It celebrates children globally. What is this day? 
Children's Day. Children's Day, exactly. El Día del Niño, ¿verdad? Often carnival, the period of merrymaking and feasting celebrated just before Lent. That is carnival. And Lent is another a way to say like Easter, right? Como... Como, uh, como pa Pascua, right? Before Lent. Uh, como la Semana Santa, ¿verdad? Lent. On Australia, they will come together as nation to celebrate what's great about Australia and being Australian. That is the Australia Day, right? Of course. A day when people play tricks on other people, the first day of the, of the fourth month, a day when people play tricks on other people, where April Fool's, right? It's April Fool's Day. And the last one is a time when you don't have to go to work or school. That is holidays, festivals, and celebrations. So that would, that would be like vacation, right? Holidays. So that would be some of the vocabulary that we're going to study. And these are some more holidays and festivals, right? So we have talked about this, like what holidays we celebrate in our country. And... Um, Day of the Dead, for example, Dia de los Difuntos, Independence Day, Christmas, Father's Day, Children's Day, Labor Day, and tomorrow, right, some Valentine's Day. Okay. Okay, now we're going to check our relative clauses. We write these relative clauses of time, begin with Thanksgiving. So, for example, um, let me see here. Yes, I will explain this, and then I will, we're going to check these exercises later. So, we are going to check right now relative clauses. Vamos a uh, estudiar las relative clauses, los últimos 15 minutos. Y mañana vamos a hacer este tipo de ejercicios porque parece que eso iba después. So, this will be the grammar for this unit. And it says, what is a sentence? What is a sentence in English? A sentence is a combo of words. It's usually known as a clause. As stated earlier, it consists of subject and a verb. So, es, un, es una oración que tiene que tener un sujeto y un verbo, ¿verdad? Simply read this guide to learn more about clauses, including examples of various clause kinds and much more. For example, a sentence is, I like bananas and I like grapes. So a sentence can be made of clauses. La, la oración puede estar hecha o formada de diferentes cláusulas o clauses, ¿verdad? Porque una clause también tiene sujeto y predicado. Next example, after she picks me up, mom is taking me to buy shoes. We have subordinate uh, clause and a main clause. Siempre hay una, um, puede ser independiente o dependiente, ¿verdad? Las, las clauses. I first met her in Paris where I lived as a small child. So, and we use commas or connectors to join or link the clauses and create a sentence, right? So, even though if it is in different colors, aunque estén en diferentes colores, toda es una oración, pero tienen diferentes uh, clauses, ¿verdad? Eh, que son subordinadas o que son eh, principales, o es la oración o la cláusula principal. So, this is the the information that we are going to study right now. What is a clause? Uh, can anybody uh, see the, the letter? ¿Puede alguien leer la letra o es muy pequeña? It's okay to teach. Okay, can you read it please, Christian? Okay. What is a clause? Mm -hmm. Clauses can be defined as the collection of words. 
the comprise of the subject and the verb that relate, relate to one another. This connection is essential because a cloud has opposite to behind just a collection of words. It transmits information about what the subject is or is doing. A cloud can frequently but not always serve as an independent statement since it communicates action or a state of exile. Uh, one clause or several clauses can be present in a sentence. A clause can only be defined by the requirement 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 that it have a link subject and verb because English use clauses for a variety mm -hmm. of purposes. There are many different methods to organize and combine them. Very good. Okay, so what it says here, uh, basically, lo que dice aquí básicamente es que hay different clauses, right? Y que las clauses forman oraciones y se pueden combinar de diferentes maneras, ¿verdad? Unas pueden ir al principio, al final, pueden ser dependientes, independientes, etc. Y de las clauses o cláusulas, de eso formamos las oraciones. Como podemos ver aquí, ¿verdad? Aquí hay dos, dos y dos. Y aquí son dos independientes, aquí es una independiente y otra dependiente, ¿verdad? Y aquí hay una main clause, que sería la, la main clause, es la independiente. La subordinate clause es la dependiente. ¿Cuál es la independiente? ¿Cómo sabemos, verdad? Por ejemplo, en la segunda dice, After she picks me up, mom is taking me to buy shoes. After she picks me up, mom is taking me to buy shoes. So, la independiente siempre va a ser la oración que tenga sentido ella sola, que no necesite de otras palabras para poderla entender. Si yo digo, mom is taking me to buy shoes, ¿qué es lo que quiere decir eso? ¿Cómo se traduce esa oración? How do you translate it? Mamá me lleva a comprar zapatos. Uh, exactly. Mom is taking me to buy shoes. Mamá me está llevando a comprar zapatos. Si yo digo, after she picks me up, ¿qué quiere decir eso? Después de levantar. Ah, no, después, después de levantar. Ah, después de que ella me recoja. Yeah. She picks me up, ¿verdad? Entonces, después de que ella me recoja, mamá me llevará o me, me va a llevar a comprar zapatos. Entonces, ¿cuál tiene sentido por ella sola? Mamá me va a llevar a comprar zapatos, ¿verdad? Eso yo lo entiendo sin ninguna otra palabra. La que no tiene sentido por ella sola es después que ella me recoja. ¿Por qué? Porque después me quedo yo y después de que ella me recoja, ¿qué, verdad? ¿Qué es lo que sigue? ¿Qué es lo que va antes? Entonces, esa depende de la principal. Mami's taking me to buy shoes. Y la última, ¿verdad? I, I first met her in Paris, where I lived as a small child. I first met her in Paris. Primero, la conocí en París. Y la otra dice, where I lived as a small child. Donde viví como cuando era un niño pequeño, uh, as a small child, como cuando vi, cu donde viví como un niño pequeño. So, I first met her in, in Paris. Esa yo la entiendo sin más palabras, pero where I lived as a small child, donde yo viví como un niño pequeño. Esa pues no la entiendo. Tiene que haber algo antes para yo poderla entender el mensaje. Entonces, esa depende de la principal. ¿verdad? En la primera, donde dice, I like bananas and I like grapes. Ahí las dos son independientes, ¿verdad? Yo entiendo I like bananas y yo entiendo I like grapes. Entonces son independientes las dos. Entonces podemos hacer varias combinaciones con independientes, con dependientes. Es por eso lo que les decía. Y las, las dos forman una oración, solo una oración, solo que es una oración compuesta. Ok, do you have any question?
preguntas. No questions. Okay, perfect. No questions. Okay, so we are going to continue. We are going to finish with clauses, right? What is a clause? A clause is a part of a sentence that includes at least one subject and one verb. La clause siempre va a tener un sujeto y un verbo. Filipa got married last week. Subject, Filipa. Got, verb. So that is a clause. A, a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and predicate and functioning as a member of a sentence. A clause is the smallest grammatical unit that contains minimally a subject and a predicate that can or cannot express a complete thought or idea. Eso es lo que acabamos de explicar. Y hay diferentes tipos de clauses, ¿verdad? Hay independent, main clause, coordinate clause, relative clause, subordinate clause, noun clause, adjective clause, adverb clause, so it depends. Hay diferentes tipos, ¿verdad? And a clause is a group of words that contains at least one subject in the predicate. A simple sentence can be made up of just one clause. Una oración solo puede tener una clause, ¿verdad? But most sentences have more than one. For example, I woke up early this morning. Me levanté temprano esta mañana. Esta solo es una clause. Number two, she got ready for school quickly when her alarm clock rang. That is a compound clause, right? Porque ahí tenemos varias clauses. She got ready for school y her alarm clock rang. So you see, we have two clauses there. It's compound. And um, this would be the, set, the difference, right? Between clause and sentence. Uh, clause is a group of words that contain a subject and a verb. Sentence is a group of words that expresses a complete thought. Siempre la oración siempre va a completar un, un pensamiento, una idea, ¿verdad? Siempre, no se va a quedar a medias. La clause sí se puede quedar a medias. Sometimes convey a complete thought. And a sentence always convey a complete thought. A clause builds a building unit of a sentence and a sentence made up of one or more clauses. And a clause can add as a noun, adverb, or adjective. And a sentence do not act as a noun, adverb, or adjective. Las clauses pueden ser adverbios o adjetivos también o nombres, pero la oración jamás va a ser eso. And we have here more examples, right? Right. My friend who has autism is brilliant at crosswords. Who has autism is a clause. John gained weight when he stopped running. When he stopped running is another clause. It's an independent. It's a, a dependent clause, right? She cannot remember what had what happened. What happened? It's another clause. You see, we have a sentence that we have a, a independent clause and a dependent clause. Entonces tenemos dependientes y dependientes, como ya vimos. So, um, I will ask you uh, as a homework to write a, a sentence like this with clauses. Ahora sí vamos a ver este. It says, for example, Rewrite these sentences with relative clauses of time. Begin with Thanksgiving. Oops. Thanksgiving is a time when Melissa invites her relatives over dinner. Frank and Karen eat turkey. Melissa's grandmother prepares a special Mexican dish called sopa. Rosalind prepares a Louisiana dish called dirty rice. Karen gives thanks for the things that have happened during the year. So, esto es lo que vamos a hacer. Quiero que escriban una oración de, de cualquier cosa. No tiene que ser del Thanksgiving o de, de ningún holiday. Pero eh, que sí tenga clauses, ¿verdad? Que sea una oración compuesta. Una oración larga, ¿verdad? Y ahí les daban el ejemplo, ¿verdad? El ejemplo de este. Por ejemplo, la uno, ¿verdad? Yo puedo empezar con Thanksgiving is a time. Thanksgiving is a time. When, y aquí cuando empieza el when, ahí pongo la otra, pongo la cross. When, Melissa, y escribo como está ahí. 
invites her relatives over for dinner. So Thanksgiving is a time when Melissa invites her relatives over for dinner. So Melissa invites her relatives over for dinner is the independent clause. Es la oración independiente. Y la oración dependiente, ¿cuál es? Thanksgiving is a time, right? When, y esta, este es dependiente porque no tiene sentido ella sola. Si ustedes no la pueden escribir, traten de escribir las demás. Les voy a tomar un screenshot ahorita para mandárselas al grupo. Pero voy a borrar esta. Voy a borrar esta que está aquí. Para que la vuelvan a escribir. Si ustedes no escriben la original, pues pueden escribir esta, ¿verdad? Ok, I will take a screenshot. Y se la voy a guardar al grupo de WhatsApp. I will send it to the WhatsApp group. So you have a homework. Let's see if you can uh, write the sentences, right? This is intermediate too, right? Okay. Okay, just one moment, please. Y ahí les dejo el deber para mañana. Homework for tomorrow. Okay, so try to write um, these clauses, right, or these compound sentences for tomorrow with uh, Thanksgiving is a time, Thanksgiving is a time when, and then write the rest of it. I don't know if you have any question about uh, relative clauses of time. Eso vamos a ver mañana. Eh, también vamos a hacer un repaso. Uh, do you have any question, any doubt? Preguntas. No. No. Okay. What What are we going to do? What are we going to do? ¿Qué vamos a hacer para mañana? ¿Cuál es la tarea? A ver, alguien que me explique. ¿Cuál es vamos la tarea para mañana? Ajá. Vamos a hacer una oración compuesta. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ya sea, si no la podemos hacer, podemos usar esta. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving is a time when... Um, cualquiera de esas cinco que tenemos ahí. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, choose one of these. Escojan una de estas y las hacen compuestas. O si no, o ustedes escriben la suya, ¿ok? Ustedes escriban una que ustedes inventen. So, we are going to finish right now the class. Thank you for being here because the rest of the class was missing. Thank you for uh, your commitment. And I will see you tomorrow and uh, have a nice evening. Okay. Have a nice night. Have a nice night. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>